I mean, we've got to speak about him off the off the bat, but Nathan Cleary, like, he's 25. He's 25. And his first 60 minutes were very average and even poor in defence at times. But rugby league's not about being perfect. Rugby league is about responding to imperfection. Rugby grand finals aren't about perfection, even though the Panthers were nearly perfect with the ball. Grand finals are about big moments. And that's what Cleary, he took that moment and made it one of the greatest moments of all time. You could sit there and try and nitpick this, that, or whatever about Cleary. But at the end of the day, Nathan Cleary was as single-handedly as you can be responsible for the greatest comeback in grand final history. 16 points or 18 points, was it 16 points? 16. 16 points is the biggest margin ever to come back from, and Cleary orchestrated it. That's... That's stats. That's, you cannot argue against that. And that's, as I said, grand finals are not about perfection. They're not about – they're about these huge moments that legends have and if they're going to step up to the plate or not. And Cleary stepped up. He didn't just step up and get them close. He stepped up and got them the third premiership in a row. Yeah, and I think the one thing that stood out with me last night with Cleary – and I agree with you, mate. The first 60 minutes – I'd argue that was the worst 60 minutes of his season mm. in a Panthers jersey. That was his worst 60 minutes. But – Championship minutes came and a champion stood up. And I think sometimes in rugby league we sleep on when you do things. Nathan Cleary, biggest stage, brightest lights, under the most pressure, and he delivered in those big moments. We had the, you know, Dalian medal the other day and people were arguing over who should have got it. Respectfully to those two guys, they didn't beat a top four side all year. Mm. Nathan Cleary, tell me he's not the best player in rugby league. I don't give a, I don't give a shit what happens in the regular season. This guy... In the biggest moments, on the biggest stages, he delivers again. And last night, he did something that... Could Joey have done that? Could some of the greats have done that? Maybe. Maybe. But there's only one guy that's managed to do it. The fact that you have to be like, yeah, I think they could do it, not they would do it, shows you that at least for his team at club level, he is a great. He is a great. Like, it is... He's won three comps in a row. He didn't come into a stacked roster. He built that roster. He was part of building it. He's now won three comps in a row. Back-to-back Dally M's. At Clubland, he's already a great, in my opinion. At Clubland. Now, obviously, we understand there's other arenas that you've got to dominate, all that kind of stuff. 25 years old, guys. Let's, let's think about that. He's got maybe another 10 years left in his career to take care of all that stuff. But as it stands... He's already a great when it comes to club in my opinion. There is no doubt about it whatsoever. Mm. I, you know, Matty, we, we had a few beers the other night and he referred to him as the Michael Jordan of rugby league. And I went, you know what? That's exactly what he is. Mm. He gets on the big stages and he absolutely dominates. And like, that's going to go down in <coughs> rugby league folklore forever. Forever. That 20 minutes was incredible. I, once again, I'm not sure how many players in the past could have done that before. And we've seen a lot of champions in grand finals when they're down and they're not able to get their side back into it. <coughs> The greatest comeback we have ever seen. And he did it. Like There was other guys that had very good performances, but you know he sets up the Mosley to try. He then kicks a foot. That 40-20 was Andrew Johns all over. Mm. That was Joey all over. That was a set after points on third tackle, I think it was. Yeah. Huge play. Huge, Huge play. play. If, if, you know, if he doesn't make it and it stays in the field of play, imagine how people would go after him. Oh. What about the catch from Renault's dropout? That's, that's centimetres. Centimetres, yep. Centimetres, this greatness. Those moments, those moments. Timmy, what do you think? Yeah, you, you talk, Kemp, you, you mentioned there about it's not all champions aren't about being perfect and it's about moments and stepping up to the plate in these big moments. And I look back at the 2015 grand final with Jonathan Thurston who won the Clive Churchill medal. And he, after that game, said it was probably the worst game of football I've ever played. Mm. But he snaps a field goal when the game was on the line to win it for the Cowboys mm and put a notch on his legacy. And Nathan Cleary did the same thing. And my favourite thing about it, when we're going to look back in the future in 20, 30 years' time, at the legacy of Nathan Cleary is people saying, oh, he's got the team around him, they're dominant, of course he can do it. Um, you know, can he do it when they're on back foot and things are going against him? He lifted and did that. Like, not only when he'd had a poor 60 minutes of footy and, you know, any normal footballer's confidence would be down. He'd oh, I don't really want to, you know, what do I do? How far can I test myself? Jerome Blue, I was off. His partner in crime in the halves, mm. Isaiah Yo, one of the best ball playing locks we've seen, was off. He lost an edge back rower, starting edge back row in Scott Sorensen. They were down and out, dead and buried. All the momentum against him, and he 
pretty well by himself, lifted them off the canvas to win him that game well, of footy. This is the spine that he did the greatest ever comeback with. Mitch Kenny, Cogger, Dylan Edwards. Dang. Compare that to some of the other, you know, and, you know, rightly so, you could go, all right, we'll look at Thurston in the 2015 grand final, Granville, Michael Morgan um, and Coote. Yeah. Michael Morgan was an origin player, I think, at that stage, or he obviously went up to. But also, Thurston was an incredible moment and probably etched himself in immortality. That was just one drop goal. We're talking about 20 minutes of the greatest rugby league you'll ever see in a grand final from a seven. That's a really, you know, Thurston had that incredible moment, but he doesn't have that moment without Michael Morgan mm. coming out with, in my opinion, probably the greatest player oh, of all time. Nice. But Cleary did it all himself. Cleary did it all himself after Ezra Mam for the first time in three years, punched Penrith in the face mm. and said, let's see how you respond. Mm. And, you know, I'll, I'll be the first to admit, when I was sitting there and Ezra Mam scored his third try, I thought, they, I, I don't know if they can come back from this. Mm. I didn't know if they were going to be able to. I genuinely didn't. And for them to turn it around in the short space of time they did. And, it, like, it's not like, as you said, it's not like Brisbane just folded. No, they did And I thought Kobe Hetherington made one of the best tackles I've ever seen oh. to stop a try. Like, if, if we win, that tackle mm. goes down in folklore. Forever. Like, it's Fisher-Harris one-on-one on your line. Yeah, it's it's it would be like Scotty Sattler sort of areas. Yeah. For people that understand rugby league, yeah. it would be. It was such a big tackle in that moment. And, you know, as I said, I think Cleary was very average for 60 minutes. His last 20 minutes, absolutely defined him. Mate, I've seen a lot of people sort of say, oh, you can't give him a Clive because he had a shit 60 minutes. Please. Just keep in mind, Joey lost his second half of his Clive Churchill winning game 24-0. Mm. No one talks about it. Yeah, yeah, of course they don't. Because we remember and the in moments. 30 years' time, Nath will be the same. Yeah, yeah. But just appreciate what's in front of you oh, right now. Just e even for the people that just don't want to like Cleary, just appreciate it. Because I guarantee in 20 years, you'll be telling your son or your daughter about Nathan Cleary. I can guarantee can, you will. Can you imagine what was going through Nathan Cleary's head? Again, you talk about champions and champion mentality. All this pressure on him and, and you know, this talk of, oh, it doesn't lift him big games and big moments and all that. And for 60 minutes, he's had one of the worst games of his career. Notably, defensively, he missed some poor tackles, got absolutely scorched by Reese Walsh. And... He came back from that and went, I'm going to lift my team off the canvas and win us this game off my own back. That, like, what's going through your head when you do oh, that? Mate, absolutely. And also, it wasn't like, oh, he was the third pass before a try. No, line break himself inside to Leota. 40 20, then, he's, then he supports on the inside. I'm pretty sure he score. Yeah, scores a try. But then the match winning, the match winning try, the match winning try is him individually just going, seeing a spot, boom, 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 try it, thanks and for coming. Even the, the, probably the least impact he had in any of those, the three tries, was Stephen Crichton's brilliant solo effort. You've still got Nathan Cleary going, all right, who's the strike weapon in this team yeah. that we need to stand up and who does in the big game? It's Stephen Crichton. And who got him the ball, one-on-one, -on -one and got him some space yeah. to allow him to do that? Yeah. Nathan Cleary. And so simple. Like, was, like, it was as simple as <laughs> identifying, I trust my bloke, <laughs> to have a big moment. Like, I trust Critter, he's going to do something special. And we'll talk about Critter's last friggin' 20 minutes because, like, God. what the hell? He had, like, five big moments. It was unbelievable. So we'll talk about that. But, yeah, Nathan Cleary, take a bow. It is unbelievable what we, what we are witnessing. He deserves everything that he gets. And on top of all of that, he is such a humble, down-to-earth bloke that deserves, like, as I just said, deserves everything he can. And, and what an incredible moment for Penrith, for the Ivan, for the Clear, for the Ivan Cleary family, <laughs> for the Cleary family as well. Again, I, I speak about it all the time, Guru, and you were there as well. And same with you, Timmy. Mate, 2019, people were calling for both of their heads. They were saying, get these buddy, get these bloody pretenders out of our club. They've they've terrorized and ruined our club. That was the yarn. That was the yarn. Ivan Cleary's spoken about how he was starting to doubt whether he was the right man for the job. And now look where they are. Like We like to look at the end result and be like, oh, look at all the origin players are there. Look at all the success they've had. It's a stacked roster. Oi, bruh, it was not a stacked roster. People were asking for them both to get sacked in 2019. It is incredible what they've achieved. You just mentioned how much of a nice, humble kid he is and everything, Nathan. I, I told Tim this story on Friday. Um, they won the 2021 Grand Final. I had him on my podcast about three or four weeks later. He's just a premiership winning captain who won a Clive Churchill medal, young guy. Remember at that stage, he was 22 years old, on top of the world. And I had my podcast, did it via Zoom. And I remember during the podcast, it dropped out. 
and I and me, I sort of went, oh my god, no really fucking way, I can't believe this, blah, blah blah. So I'm trying to sort it out and everything, blah blah blah. Anyway, had my phone next to me, but it was face down. Picked up my phone. I had about three missed calls from Nath. I eventually answered because I wasn't looking at it. Answered for and it was, mate. I'm so sorry. Are you good? Are you can we go again? Can we do it? My thing died. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And I'm sitting there going, you might be the greatest player of all time. <laughs> you don't know me from a bar of fucking soap. <laughs> yeah. And he's rang me three or four times in that moment to apologise. He mm. could have quite easily gone, oh, well, thing died. I'll call it a day. I'm yeah. going to the beach. Yeah. Just want a premiership. But that's the sort of guy that Nate is. And you can all hate him and you can all, you know, watch things and gain an impression on him. He is such a nice guy. Mm. And as no. you said, just a genuine, humble kid. Yeah. But it's just starting to own big moments. It's absolutely incredible. I, I said on the Morning Glory show with uh, <laughs> Matty Johns that, you know, and, and Matty brought it up how, you know, it does seem like Nathan Cleary is almost starting to get his own swagger, his own belief. Whereas you could see in the last couple of years, he was he, he didn't really, you know, didn't really sit well with him that he was great. And you know, I said on the show that I felt like heading into this final series, you could see that he had accepted the mantle of greatness almost. That he had accepted that, okay, everyone keeps saying it, but now I believe it. And also, not only do I believe it, I'm comfortable with it. And that's the moment that he delivered. That's the moment that he delivered. Can you imagine the confidence he's going into next season with? Like that, that Brisbane side, I said it last night on social media, I, like, I reckon they beat a lot of teams in the past. Yeah. Like, and they are the first team to really give them a shake on that very big stage. And they, like, they dominated the first half. They went in only up by two points. That can rattle your head a little bit. They then came out 5-8, scored three tries in 12 minutes or whatever, down 16 points. Now Nath knows... Jeez, I can overcome that. Mm. It's insane. But when he scored that final try, the match winner, I saw it and my initial reaction was too easy. Mm. I'm like, someone's gone down or there's a lead run, knock someone over because he went through too easy. There was too much space. Mm. The first replay was the, the face on one. There wasn't a lead runner. There was no one there. Yeah. It was just footwork and seeing a gap open up. And wasn't it just a classic moment from a great where it just looks like everyone else is in slow motion? Yeah. And he's got all the time in the world. And it was such a special moment for me to see Nath score that try. There was no one within Kui of him, nah. which is just represents where he is right now and, in rugby league. And also, what I, what I, um, look, I can't say I loved about the moment, <laughs> but what I appreciated about the moment um, was the fact that what's the, the one knock that is Cleary? Like the one knock on Cleary is too structured. Too structured, doesn't have the flair of a Joey or a Thurst, and he doesn't have the, you know, the, that pizzazz, the je ne sais quoi. <laughs> he doesn't have that. That's the knock. Have you ever heard someone say that in rugby league? That clearly doesn't have the je ne sais quoi? You've never heard that? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> but what I loved about that try. No, 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 <laughs> what is je ne sais quoi? Something special, Google it. I think it was like that that, that bit of magic. Oh, how yeah, please, how on earth do I spell that? Yeah, they say French saying for it. something special. I bet you it comes up Genesis Saint Quoi. Okay. Look, I probably fucking butchered it. For anyway. 10 off, many log code. Genesis Saint Quoi. But what I loved about that try is that knock of like, oh, too structured, too structured. It's the one like nonsense throw out line that people try to say to not credit Cleary for every, what, everything he's done. But that try was. That came purely off his structure because it came from fatigue. It came from his game plan of turning blokes under, turning mm. blokes under, turn, trusting eventually their forwards are going to be so tired they're going to make a mistake. It wasn't crazy footwork. It wasn't crazy strength. It was fatigued front, fatigued uh, back rowers and forwards that had been tackling their asses off all day due to his game plan that he implemented that gave him the match winner. So. The, the huge cutout ball that you cut out ball that like the you know crazy players can throw even though we know Cleary can throw that that gets intercepted or goes out over the sideline he did the one percent of play which was fatigue him step in the inside score a try to win win the game that's what you call that's the benefit of being Nathan Cleary that's what he can offer you is a win rate of 85 percent in a whole season dominance over a four-year period because what what's the negative that comes with players that have that kind of extra bit of magic the negative is they can have down years because it just isn't clicking for them i mean a perfect example reese walsh even though he still has some big moments there were moments that just didn't work for him and that's the thing you'll see the highlights of reese and look reese so young he, he'll i didn't think he played badly at all i thought he played solidly with a mixed bag um like he'll learn so much from this but that's what you get with those highlight real players is that they can have those 
moments that just the ball goes ten, uh, you know, a few meters too deep or a few meters too short. With Cleary, is what you get is you get three freaking premierships in a row and a match winner. What do you got there, Matty? Je ne sais quoi. A pleasing quality that cannot be exactly named or described. <laughs> That's what you come here for. That's what you come here for. You come here for deep analysis of rugby league, baby. Oh. Um, but what, that's that's what I loved about the try. And, it, what, it pitch, and what it was, Kempi, was it was crazy vision. Mm, mm. He goes there and said there, there were no lead runners. There was no setup player or anything. He just – it was Jordan Ricky at marker. Ricky goes the wrong way. I think Billy Walters sort of overcommitted a little bit. And just in the bottom right of his eye, because he was going left, going down that short side, bottom right, he saw – Ricky missed his mark, and he's gone bang, and just yeah. zeroed in on that big gap there. Ricky didn't get across. Walsh was sort of scrambling across. Walsh, well, Walters, I should say, went a little bit too far. I think it's Kate Well. Kate Well. Kate Well. Yep. Kate went a little bit too far, and Cleary's just seen that little gap open up and go bang. Yeah. And imag <sighs> imagine if he gets tackled there, mm. game could be over because you're at the four minute mark, three minute mark. Broncos get the ball maybe the next play because he's tackled. He'd have been shot. He, yeah. So, yeah. And yet he still made the play. Huge, huge. It's understanding the moment. Mm. It's just, fuck. It is so good to see. And as I said, like, we just witnessed greatness. And look, obviously I know I've been seeing all the comments of people putting shit on me. Hey, winners win, baby. You guys earned it. Penrith fans, fans, enjoy it. Enjoy it.